Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion for Friday, November 26, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time where we can grow in love of God and love of neighbor. We're using a new resource this year, A Guide to Prayer for All Who Seek God by Norman Shawchuk and Ruben Job. If you want to grab that and follow along, you would be more welcome. You would be welcome to do that. Uh, You can get that at cokesbury.com. Our theme has been God's preposterous promise as we start our new Christian year in the season of Advent. So hear the affirmation. For in Christ, every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason, it is through him that we say the Amen to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 Friends, hear the petition. Remember your word to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress, that your promise gives me life. Psalm 119, 49 and 50. Our reading today comes from Reflections for Ragamuffins by Brennan Manning. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Revelations 21, 4. Christmas is the promise that God, who came in history and comes daily in mystery, will one day come in glory. God is saying in Jesus that in the end everything will be all right. Nothing can harm you permanently. No suffering is irrevocable. No loss is lasting. No defeat is more than transitory. No disappointment is a conclusion. Jesus did not deny the reality of suffering, discouragement, disappointment, frustration, and death. He simply stated that the kingdom of God would conquer all of these horrors that the Father's love is so prodigal that no evil could possibly resist it. Wow, what a beautiful testament today. Do you believe that despite everything, it will be okay? That if you truly have faith that it really doesn't matter what you endure, And in fact, your suffering can be used for God's glory and you can use it to help others. Now, I'm not saying, and I don't believe, and I don't think the person of Christ demonstrates this at all, that we should just ignore suffering. I don't think that we should just ignore the pain of our world. There are some Christians who, yep, who cares? God will fix it all one day. That's not the person of Christ. Christ says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he heals and he teaches and he performs miracles and he does things, simple, wonderful, beautiful things that change people's lives in the moment. But as his disciples, we pick up our cross and follow him. As his disciples, if we truly want to be disciples, We take everything that comes with that. The first disciples took great suffering and all but one was either executed or murdered, took their own life. Only one of the 12, we believe, died of old age. And they took on that suffering with gladness because they knew that in Christ, nothing that humans could do to them truly mattered. And they had experienced wonderful things. I don't think any single one of them would have regretted giving up their lives for what they had seen and what they were promised. It can be a difficult thing to live with our sufferings. But as disciples, again, I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm speaking as those who claim to be Christians, who claim to be disciples. We take it in stride. See the good. See the opportunity. See the way that we can truly love others 
of God. Our final scripture reading this week comes from Isaiah, Isaiah 46 through 11. A voice was saying, call out. And another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up. The flowers wither when the Lord breathes breaths when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flowers wither, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a mountain, messenger. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend his flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing ooze. God bless the reading of the prophet today. The prophecy of hope that one day God would be with us, that acknowledges that we are temporary, but God's word is with us forever, acknowledging that God is here and would be here and like a shepherd would gather us together and keep us safe. We call Christ the good shepherd because we believe he gathered together those and continues to gather together those and continues to search for that one lost lamb continues to reach out and be in action in our world it is one of the distinctive parts of our faith that god became vulnerable and fallible broken human And overcame great things. And lives with us. And is involved with us. And moves and acts with us. And loves us. And it can be a hard thing to accept for us. Can you accept it this Advent season? The expectation that God is with you. That God loves you. You, not that God loves everyone, not that God loves, period, but that God loves you, that God is with you if you desire it to be so. And open yourself up. We've been talking about different prayer practices, Thanksgiving petition, intercession, praise. Today we talk about offering, I think a vital and important part of our prayer practice and devotional life. How do we offer ourselves to God? We talk about time, talents, and treasures. Perhaps as you come to worship, there's times for you to offer yourself to God. Perhaps this weekend, there will be opportunities for you to offer yourself, to offer your time. This is an offering of time, and I thank you for that. But are there other opportunities? Pray for them. I like to say a simple prayer, Lord, give me opportunities today to share your good news that's an offering sometimes i have those opportunities let's pray lord i thank you for all those who have gathered with us this week who have joined together in this time of devotion they have offered themselves to you their time allow them to continue to offer themselves their time treasures their talents In all things they do, make them offering. Allow them to offer themselves to others as well. We pray this in your holy name. Praying the prayer you taught us. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now let us enter this moment of silence, being still, knowing that God is with us. Try to just remove all the concerns from your mind right now, and just open yourself up to what God may speak to you today. Amen. Friends, hear God's promise. Here is my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not wrangle or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick, until he brings justice to victory. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. Matthew twelve eighteen through 21. Friends, as I leave you for this beautiful weekend, I hope you go so with thanksgiving and praise in the promise of God's love as we start in worship our Advent season. I do invite you to church, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. in person, umcnl.com. 11 a.m. live streamed and available after that so you can catch us at your convenience. Join us as we open ourselves up to the expectations of the Advent season. Hear this response. My soul dances in delight for God has visited me with unspeakable promise which God alone can perform. Friends, until next week, God bless you. Goodbye. Amen.